for the first time as the Duke University men's basketball coach, John Shire had a press conference with his full coaching staff beside him. The team tries to figure out what the identity will be moving into the upcoming season, transfer portal targets, and more. As on today's edition of Locked On Blue Devils, Steve Wiseman from the Durham Herald Sun and the Raleigh News and Observer will join me on the program to talk all things Duke basketball. Let's get right into it. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another edition of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. J.J. Jackson here, as we have a lot to discuss on the show today. Follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. You can follow me on Twitter at underscore J.J. underscore Jackson underscore. Busy day in the Duke Athletics world here on this Wednesday, May 4th. Hope that you're doing well, as uh, we'll bring in our guest for today's show, my buddy Steve Wiseman from the Raleigh News and Observer, kind enough to join us once again. Steve, it's been a little bit, but it's always a pleasure when you uh, when you chat with me. Thank you for doing this again today. Yeah, glad to be with you again. It has been a little while. A lot, a lot of things have happened over the last couple of months here, right? And no uh, kidding. So we got some stuff to catch up on. Yeah, so I got a chance to chat with you in the early stages of the NCAA tournament, and then all of a sudden, Duke kept winning basketball games, kept winning basketball games, and. Gosh, don't you know it? They made it all the way to the Final Four, had that epic matchup with their biggest rival, the greatest rivalry in college sports, and uh, everything has continued to move as fast as all get out uh, to, to get to where we're at today. It has, yeah. You know, we, we knew as soon as the season was over, John Shire was going to take over. Uh, didn't know when it was going to happen. Uh, you know, that run of the Final Four was magical. I know nobody on the Duke side obviously liked the way it ended, but I guess you have to look at the whole the whole picture here. They won, they won the ACC regular season. Uh, they won, they went and made the Final Four. So, as Coach K always says, two new banners to go up in the in the rafters, which is always a good thing, right? So, um, yeah, and and it, it's going to be something for the program to get over. I mean, the fact that the way that it ended, the two losses to Carolina, uh, you know, in Cameron, and then the Final Four aren't going to be easy for Duke fans to, to swallow. I know that everybody knows that in the program. Uh, nobody, everybody wanted it to be the opposite way. It didn't work out. So now they just have to build on what they have uh, going forward to keep this program at the level that it's been for, for quite some time now. That's the challenge that lies in front of John Shire and his, his new staff that he just put together. Yeah. A, a big staff that he's been able to put together. And obviously the headline hire happened uh, officially on Monday when they announced that Jay Lucas would be coming over from Kentucky. And I want to get to to Lucas here in just a little bit, but we mentioned a press conference taking place yesterday from Shire specifically. What were kind of the big takeaways that you had from what he had to say, Steve? Yeah, you know, he talked about how, how he kind of put this staff together, you know, and uh, Nolan Smith leaving to go to Louisville. That's something that happened since we've talked last. was a big a big thing for, for Duke to lose a young, talented assistant like that. Uh, you know, he had a chance to go home for himself, right? He's a Louisville native. His dad played for the Cardinals. Uh, his, you know, steeped in the tradition of that program. Uh, the time had never been right for him to go back. One thing was for him, um, not to get too far off the track here, but just to talk about Nolan for a second, was – was the uh, you know losing his father when his dad was 34 to a sudden heart attack when Nolan was coming out of high school and picking where to go play as a as a college player he said he wasn't prepared to go to Louisville at that moment he couldn't emotionally handle following his father's footsteps which is why he picked Duke turned out really well for him and for Duke national championship all that kind of stuff ACC Player of the Year became a really good assistant coach um, and uh, uh, so then the opportunity came up this time Kenny Payne was close to his father, was close to Nolan's father, uh, and it he felt like he's in emotionally a better place now to make that move and to go home. So that that opened up something for uh, for some changes on the staff. Emil Jefferson moves up uh, as, an, as a full assistant coach after being that kind of director of player development role. And then uh, Duke goes outside to get uh, Jay Lucas, um, who kind of similar to Nolan, uh, Jay Lucas is coming home. He's he was born in Houston, but his father, 
John Lucas, uh, you know, was a star at Hillside High before he went to Maryland, became the number one pick in the draft. Long NBA career, NBA coaching career. Uh, but uh, but Jay told us yesterday his grandfather, John John H. Lucas, the first, um, is still alive. He's 101 years old, still living in wow. Durham. Uh, there's a middle school, Lucas Middle School in Durham, is named after his his grandfather. His grandfather was president of Shaw University for a while. Uh, so big in education, very involved in you know, a former principal at Hillside High, so involved in integration in Durham back in the day. There's going to be some stories coming out about that. I know, I know I'm working on one myself about that angle of the Jay Lucas return. So anyway, that's a long way to say, like, Duke lost Nolan Smith because of a family situation, and they got Jay Lucas back because of a family situation. He always wanted to come back to, to Durham. He has a lot of cousins and family in, in, in the Durham area. And so uh, it's a chance for him to come home. Another young, hot, uh, up-and-coming up assistant coach that I think will do well for John Shire and his staff. In addition to that, we mentioned uh, kind of the coaching staff coming together, but Mike Schrage comes back to Durham after being the Elon head coach. Uh, special assistant to the head coach, I believe, is going to be his official title mm -hmm. uh, with Duke. Tell me a little bit more about this hire. Yeah, I mean, Shire um, wanted somebody uh, with head coaching experience to come join his staff. And uh, um, there really wasn't somebody, you know, in the Duke family outside of Shroggy. Uh, obviously, he's he wasn't a player or a former a coach at Duke, but uh, he, he went to Indiana and then he worked at Duke for nine years under Coach K uh, as a recruiting coordinator and director of basketball operations, that kind of that same role. Uh, and before he went off and coached with Johnny Dawkins at Stanford and then uh, for uh, Chris Holtman, both at Butler and Ohio State, and then he became the head coach at Elon. So uh, that really was the move that 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 Shire wanted to make. Somebody he knew, he knew Shroggy from uh, – Shroggy was at Duke when, when John Shire was recruited and early in his career. So he, he's known him for quite some time. They've kept in touch over the years. They're, they're, they're pretty good friends, and, and uh, it just – you know, uh, the fact that he left a full head coaching job to a job that's not a full assistant coach, right, was what's kind of struck people odd. And and I, I asked him about that specifically yesterday. And, he, you know, he just said this was a window that was open right now to come in on the ground floor of this new era of Duke basketball. And this is uh, – uh, he knew he had things he could offer to John to help John get going and keep Duke – at the level it's been at for quite some time under Coach K. And so uh, you couldn't really – the timing seemed odd, but this was the timing that was available, right? He wanted to come in now. He also mentioned he's got two teenage children. Uh, his son uh, is entering his senior year of high school. His daughter's 14, so she's getting ready to go to high school. So um, maybe he wanted to get off the road. Uh, this role he has, he's not you know an on-the-road recruiter. Uh, uh, so it kind of takes that that travel part away and allows him to – spend some more time with family, but also, so it's kind of the combination of those two things. And, uh, you know, Elon's right down the road. So it's not, not like he has to move across the country. Uh, he could just drive over here and, and keep working. His kids can go to the same school. It's all good. So, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a big help to John Shire. I think having somebody who's been a head coach for the last three years, uh, on his staff. No kidding. I'm excited to see this new era of, of Duke men's basketball. As I told you before we went going, it's, it was just kind of cool to see them all behind one table together. We'll see that same shot on a bench here a couple of months from now uh, when game action happens and that sort of thing. I want to talk a little bit more about the significance of the Jay Lucas hire and what it can do for Duke basketball moving forward here in just a moment. Let's take one quick time out in our conversation with Steve Wiseman as we want to tell you about our friends over at Built Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar that you were going to find. Summer is coming and with summer, you're going to need more food on the go. Built Bars are the perfect snack to take with you wherever you go on all of your vacations. All Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means with Built Bar, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it. Built Bars make sure that there's something for everyone. Tons of new flavors are always coming out, and you can find something that you'll love. Most Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Go to Built.com. You can see a list of all the flavors, including banana cream pie, raspberry, double chocolate, and so much more. Go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and get 15% off your order. Promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order at Built.com. Welcome back in here to Locked On Blue Devils. J.J. Jackson back with my buddy Steve Wiseman from the Raleigh News and Observer in the Durham Herald Sun. The Duke coaching staff is now complete. 
Jay Lucas, the final hire. People were really curious if they would go outside of the brotherhood. And for a while, it felt like maybe this Jay Lucas thing wasn't going to happen. But all of a sudden, late Friday, we start to hear some things as Duke makes the official announcement on Monday that Jay Lucas would, in fact, be joining the brotherhood. And as he has said, come back closer to home in Durham with so many family around the area and that sort of thing. What is the significance from the true basketball perspective of this hire, Steve? Yeah, he's he's got already got a reputation as a tremendous recruiter. Uh, he's 33 years old, so kind of like uh, like Shire, he can relate with uh, with today's player. They're only 10 years apart in age or for the oldest guys, 15 apart for high school kids, but a lot closer, a lot closer than 75, which is what Coach K was, right? Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, he's already he's already uh, you know built that reputation. And he's the experience he's got in such a short time in the game, you know, as a player, uh, he was recruited and went to Florida and uh, played for Billy Donovan. And then he transferred, went to Texas, played for Rick Barnes, became a coach under Rick Barnes. Uh, Then he switched and coached under John Calipari. So look at all the boxes he checks when he talks to different players in different situations. He can talk to transfers and say, yeah, I've been there as a transfer. I know what that's like. Uh, I've been there as a top recruit, you know, going to Florida. Uh, he's played for for great coaches, Hall of Fame coaches, you know, uh, um, uh, really accomplished coaches, and so uh, uh, he really brings a lot to the program. And he brings, you know, the cliche of fresh eyes. I mean, uh, Duke hasn't made a hire like this in, gosh, almost thirty years. You know, since they've had a, a coach come in who wasn't a Duke graduate, wasn't a Duke player, wasn't a former Duke assistant, nothing. Um, you have to go back to like Mike Bray and Tim O'Toole and those kind of guys, right? Uh, and they all worked out okay. So. Yeah, uh, that 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 makes this a really different hire. But you know, getting to talk to Jay yesterday and meet him for the first time, um, he really seems like he's he's ready to go and he's really excited about uh, you know being part again, like Shroggy mentioned, being part of this this new era of Duke basketball of, of a of a great program that's that's starting kind of there's a freshness here uh, with, with a new staff, even though some of the guys are have so many ties to the program. But there's you know there's a whole new team coming in, and uh, you know they're trying to move on from Coach K and prove they can keep. Keep Duke basketball where it's been for a long time. Yeah, let's talk about a couple of things there because, for one, in the uh, earlier in the week, the Duke men's basketball social media has a two and a half minute video or so of Jay Lucas's first day on campus, and Coach K is very much so a part of it. Coach K there uh, meeting Jay Lucas in the video, uh, and it felt like okay, this is going to be something that we're going to see moving forward, which is exciting, I think, for a lot of uh, Duke fans out there that Coach K said he wouldn't be too far away at all. Uh, and here we are on the first day of Jay Lucas walking in. He gets to meet the legend himself and Mike Krzyzewski. Yeah, and, and I could add to that, you know, when Ryan Young, the transfer, was on his visit uh, last week, uh-huh. one of his, on his agenda was he went up to the sixth floor of the Schwartz Butters building to Coach K's office and uh, <laughs> had a little a little meeting with Coach K. So it's a different role. He's not re- technically recruiting him. He's not going to play for him, but he's very much involved in, in what they're doing and uh, just not as heavily as he was, but uh, – but yeah, uh, he, he's certainly going to have a hand in things. Uh, John Shire will seek his counsel whenever he needs it. He, John's already told me and others that he's he won't hesitate to call and have Coach K come to practice and say, "Hey, uh, you know, can you uh, can you take a look at what's going on here?" Awesome. <laughs> and uh, when need be, I, it won't be every day. Coach K's got some travel he wants to do with his wife. He's got a new puppy, as we know. He's very busy with that. But uh, yeah, he's he's certainly still involved in Duke basketball in a big way. <laughs> The puppy named Coach. It's so yeah. iconic. As, uh, <laughs> right, so we're talking more about the, the coaching staff coming together and, and the Jay Lucas uh, hire in detail. Chris Carowell, I believe, was also making comments to not make this only a recruiting thing, which is uh, so easy to do because you look at those 24-7 sports rankings and it was Shire and Lucas right there at the top of all of this. And you're thinking, well, Duke already has the number one class in 2022 and 2023 well are they going to start turning into fifth graders i mean where how far down the line <laughs> can they go with all of this but I, I did think it was pretty cool for someone else in the room to kind of speak up and say like you still got to play basketball and you still got to coach the guys that are on the roster right and again you know uh speaking of jay lucas i mean he has a lot of you know playing experience uh and then of course his family with basketball you know with with his father uh being a former nba head coach nba player college all-american uh, college current assistant coach in college in NBA. So yeah, he, he can certainly, he knows the X's and O's. That's not going to be a problem. He he's, he's steeped in that for his whole life. So, uh, it's really, it's really a great hire. You know, let's face it. Jay Lucas will probably be a head coach sometime down the road. I think he's got that pedigree 
And uh, so he's going to be able to do all that stuff. And this is a great place for him to learn and, and continue on his journey toward that goal. I'm still a part of the, uh, I, I guess, my age growing up, the Lucas family, kind of one of the first moments they came on the radar for me was when Jay's older brother, John Lucas III, was playing in the NBA and famously LeBron catches an alley-oop jumping over him yeah. entirely. And that's uh, <laughs> one of the, one of the fo- first moments that uh, the Lucas family came on the radar for me. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about what's next for this Duke men's basketball team and just some other hot topic uh, things to discuss on today's edition of Lockdown Blue Devils when we're back in just one moment. Today's edition of Lockdown Blue Devils is brought to you by our friends over at Rock Auto. Let me tell you a little bit about Rock Auto. Rock Auto is so awesome. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. Why endure the often pointless and seemingly intimidating line of questioning from folks at the Rock Auto parts stores when you can do and order all the ordering online yourself? You've got computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when you're using Rock Auto. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Prices are reliably low for every customer. They have everything you can need, brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution for your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, locked on Blue Devils, and then how did you hear about us, Fox? So they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com. As we wrap up today's edition of Locked On Blue Devils, I'm here with Steve Wiseman from the Raleigh News and Observer and the Durham Herald Sun. You mentioned some of the stories that you're working on, Steve, but uh, go ahead and give me a quick plug of everything you've got going on. Yeah, you know, we posted a story uh, late last night about kind of looking at the Mike Schrage hire, uh, why he left Elon in that situation. I talked about a little bit here, but there's some more details in that story. You can find it at newsobserver.com. And um, also, you know, we'll be diving into the Jay Lucas hire and, and trying to, you know, look at his his family. As I spoke about his grandfather and his steep, deep history in, in Durham educational circles. Um, and, and Jay's grandmother uh, was also a, a middle school principal in the Durham Public School District. So hi- education is very important in their family. And uh, so it's kind of fitting that uh, that Jay's back here at Duke, obviously known for for education and, yeah. and great basketball. So that's one thing we're working on. And then also, you know, just continuing to to monitor what the roster is going to look like for next year. Uh, tech, you know, Trevor Keels is uh, is obviously – exploring the NBA right now, there is still a chance he might come back. Um, so uh, if he doesn't get the draft grade that he wants, and that's something that John Shire addressed a little bit yesterday. Uh, so that kind of leaves a little, little opening on the roster there, whether they'll get a, a veteran uh, transfer guy uh, or if, the, if Trevor will be that, that other uh, uh, veteran guard to go with, with Jeremy Rose. So I'll have a story coming out about that kind of look at the roster and where they are now and what the scholarship situation looked like. That's one thing I'm working on this week as well. And the best thing that I'll speak for you, Steve, that I love is just the fact that it's not just basketball. You do such a great job uh, with the football side of things as well. We're exiting spring ball. Mike Elko era is starting. And just thinking about this daily podcast that we do here at Locked On Blue Devils and then all the Duke content that's out there, it's incredibly exciting in a way. It's a breath of fresh air that Coach K, David Cutcliffe, great, but you kind of knew what they were. And now here we are, we're entering – uh, an academic year of Duke athletics that has two new coaches at both football and men's basketball. Yeah. And they're both, you know, heavily involved in, in again, establishing their, their name and their brand. Uh, you know, the Duke brand is strong and nobody questions that, but, but these guys are bringing new approaches to things. And, and of course, football, we'd seen a, a drop off in the, in the performance on the field that needs to be turned around. So uh, he's, he's very involved in, in trying to market the program in the community, Coach uh, Cutcliffe obviously did that as well. But but Elko's out there. Uh, one thing he did was, from a media standpoint, he all the spring practices were open to the media the, from from start to finish, which isn't something you see a lot in major college football. Uh, even Coach Cutcliffe uh, didn't do that. Uh, he brought his, the SEC mentality, right, of keeping things silent. So that's one thing that's different. Coach Elko's trying to to keep things open and 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 show people what's going on with this program as he's trying to trying to improve it there. They've got some, a couple of transfers coming in. Uh, obviously transfers went on the way out. We know a lot, a lot of guys from last year's team are gone. So, but uh, you know, they, they, they have to establish something new 
and uh, something better because it wasn't it wasn't good enough. Obviously, it, the last couple of years, you know, going one and seventeen in ACC play and and going zero and eight last season. My one Duke football question I'll give you here in the month of May uh, as you start to look at this upcoming season again. The first for Coach Elko, it's got to come back to the quarterback position, right? And I mean that was kind of the focus of the spring game we saw with Riley Leonard and Jordan Moore, but quarterback's probably the spot where you got to start. Absolutely. You can't, you can't win without a, without a solid quarterback. So, uh, you know, both those, both those guys are sophomores and one started a game. They both got playing experience last year, but, and they're different. I mean, Jordan Moore brings that excitement, that, that rushing ability, making plays that way. And, uh, uh, Riley Leonard is is the better pocket passer. They kind of they both fit into that that role, right? So I think we'll see both of them involved this year in the offense, um, either you know rotating or if Jordan gets the job and wins it and carries it, or or Riley. Even if Riley wins it, I think you'll see Jordan coming in on some short yardage situations. Maybe they'll find ways to use maybe both of them on the field at the same time. Who knows? Jordan Moore can can be a slot back and, and be in that used in that manner. So um, I think there's. There's excitement there at the newness of, and, and some young talent. It's going to be some growing pains as they learn how to play major college football, right? Um, I wouldn't expect, uh, you know, a, a Coastal Division championship run this year by any stretch of the imagination. But but I think uh, th- th- there is talent there that was left behind by the old staff at, at quarterback. And, and more excitement coming for Duke football, I'm sure. The same set with Duke men's basketball. Uh, you're right. I'm really curious to see what Trevor Keels decides to do, how the roster shapes out and that sort of thing, which is why I've got plenty of reason to keep reading your work and follow you on Twitter, Steve, at Steve Wiseman NC. And then let me do this too, because it's one of my favorite podcasts that's out there, uh, Believe in Duke, available wherever you get your podcast, yourself and Sheldon Williams. You guys got to kind of recap that Final Four journey and the big run that Duke men's basketball had this past year. Yeah, we did. You know, and, uh, you know, Sheldon, of course, was – was on the court at Cameron for the last home game, you know, with that great big group yeah. of almost a hundred uh, alums that came back. So uh, that was cool for him. He so shared some stories about that. And then we, we, we had some podcasts during the final four run there uh, where he, he got some great insight on, you know, he was part of the final four team in 2004. So uh, he, 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 you know, could, could relate to that as well. And, uh, and, and, and losing, you know, the last game again, we mentioned that losing to Carolina was no fun for anybody in Duke blue. But uh, you, you have to look at the season as a whole, and that's what Sheldon and I did, uh, kind of breaking that down and, and looking ahead to next year and what's you know what's coming in and what Shire is going to do. Uh, you know, Sheldon's career at Duke kind of ended as John's was beginning. They didn't cross paths. They were kind of two shifts passing in the night, but they do know each other very well. So, um, yeah, Sheldon brings a unique insight as a, as a former Duke player and somebody with NBA experience to what's going on with, uh, with Duke basketball. I mentioned kind of the academic year coming to the close and, and kind of putting it into – the Believe in Duke podcast for the year, mm-hmm. in a sense. What I mean, looking back, how's that transition been moving over to the podcasting world with all the great writing and coverage you have, Steve? Yeah, it's it's been great. It's been another way to deliver information to uh, to to fans and uh, and and consumers of the of sports media. And uh, uh, it's something where I'm learning as I'm going along. I'm not as I'm not as uh, as sharp as as people like yourself. Uh, it's not <laughs> what I went to school to do, but I'm learning and trying to teach an old dog new tricks, right? That kind of thing. But uh, yeah, it's been great. It's been it, I, I have enjoyed it, and uh, you know we also have an ACC Now podcast at the News and Observer, uh, which we kind of rebooted mid-season. Okay. Uh, and uh, I, I'm I'm part of that rotation along with Luke DeCock and uh, uh, C.L. Brown, our Carolina writer, and Jonas Pope, our NC State writer. We kind of take turns on that one, so I have to fill in on that one every now and again. And uh, yeah, so uh, again, a new way to, to to deliver information to people. We're always up for that. Well, Steve, I really do appreciate you taking some time to chat with me today. This has been a whole lot of fun, uh, and I look forward to talking again soon, okay? Very good, JJ. Thank you. That's my good buddy, Steve Wiseman, from the Rally News and Observer in the Durham Herald Sun, joining us here on today's edition of Locked On Blue Devils. And that does it for our show here today. Thank you so much for listening. Follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. Please subscribe to our YouTube page. Also subscribe to the podcast feed. Leave us a five-star rating and written review on the Apple podcast feed for Locked On Blue Devils. And while you're at it, do the same for the Believe in Duke podcast. Help them out, spread the word about all the good Duke content that's out there. Coming up a little bit later in the week, I've got an interview with Grayson Loftus and Paul Davis, two commits for the Duke football program, the future stars of Mike Elko's squad. That'll do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.